Praise the Lord. Church, praise ye the Lord. This is a new month. To the glory of God. And like the choir has led us, this is the month of fruitfulness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please turn to your neighbor. Just with a smile, just say, your month, your month of June shall be very fruitful indeed. Please, if somebody said it without showing his teeth, turn to another person quickly so that you can collect blessing. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You Everything derives from you. And that is why, Lord, we return the praise to you. Every glory, every honor is due to you. Lord, we ask, ask that you will accept them from us. Even this day, in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is the hour you have made. That Father, you've decided to speak to your children. We ask indeed that you will speak to us. Even as you speak through me, Lord, I ask that you will grant me utterance. You will grant us hearing, O oh God, that Father, each and every one will receive the message you have desired for him or her. Thank you, precious Father. Help us, Lord, to focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. This is the month of loyalty in four square organization. And this is the month we show our loyalty. We try again to ruminate in our lives our loyalty to the Lord and then of course to the organization which is four square so we bless the Lord because the month of June is a special month more so that is being rightly christened the month of fruitfulness and our topic this morning is a call to all round fruitfulness. As our most beloved brother Chris, who had led us, he tried to go give us a spectrum of fruitfulness all round spiritual, financial, physical, health wise, name it. But one thing I want to tell us straight away is that. Our God, right from the very goal, had been determined and is still determined to bless you and I. And that blessing shall be all around in our lives in the name of Jesus. 
Fruitfulness is one of the characteristics of God. And as God's own children, we are expected to reflect those characteristics. Let's quickly look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 22. And from there, we also read verse 28, Genesis chapter 1. And it says, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. 28. It also says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, God had imputed his character, his nature, his characteristic unto us. Be fruitful and multiply. And that is the blessing that God particularly bequeathed on, unto us. In the Old Testament, the covenant God made with his people, Israel, reflected his desire for all embracing fruitfulness, even within the community of his children. And we are God's own children today. In the New Testament, as you go on, let's look at John chapter 15, verse 16. It says, the church is also expected to be fruitful. And you and I from the church of God today, 15, 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should do what? Go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit shall remain. That whosoever you shall, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And when you look at Christ's mission on earth, nothing but fruitfulness. All filled up with fruitfulness. And the church that has azirin, uh, arisen after Christ rose and ascended is nothing other than the church that has been bequeathed with fruitfulness. We can only experience this when we are given to prayers, when we are given to the study of the word. When we are given to evangelism, when we are given to soul winning, when we are given to planting of churches that can arise from the mission field. And when we look at the life of the early church, that was exactly what they did. They were given to prayers. They were given to study of the word. We talk about the missionary journeys of Paul. The missionary journeys of all the other apostles. And from there, the church planted. And you and I are product of those missionary journeys that arose after Christ returned to heaven. May God fill us with that fruitfulness today in Jesus' name. And we can only therefore particularly be fruitful in that side if we enlist in the vineyard of the Lord. And so this morning, we want to look at the, the portrait of a fruitful person. Number two, we want to look at the power available for all-round fruitfulness. Three, we want to look at the process that is necessary for all-round fruitfulness. Let's look at the first subdivision, the portrait of a person that is fruitful. A fruitful person must, one, he must be a genuine child of God. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11. It says, to what purpose is the multitude 
of your sacrifices unto me, said the Lord. I'm full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of the goats. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice if the sacrifice is not offered in the right proportion? In the right portion. In the right atmosphere. If it's not offered by the right person. The Lord delights in our sacrifices. But when it is offered in the proper manner. And that to offer that sacrifice therefore. We have to be God's own children. Nobody can just come and offer a sacrifice. No. God will not accept it. You have to be in line. But I thank God that it's very easy. It's very simple to be in line. Which is just surrender your life to Jesus. And accept the Lordship of Jesus over your life. As many of us have done so today. And we can talk of offering a sacrifice. Whether it's a sacrifice of praise. Whether whatever the sacrifice is. Then God will accept them from us because we are genuinely God's own children. Let's quickly move on to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Okay, it's already there. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is that will be completely sold out to him. We'll be completely sold out to him. We will not have a compartment that is reserved for us. When you accept the will, when you accept the lordship of the Lord, then what it means is that you surrender the totality of your life unto him. There is nothing that you reserve. We will be completely sold out to God's will. When we wake up, we are sold out to him. When we go to bed, we are sold out to him. In our thoughts, we are sold out to him. Because we know that he owneth everything. He is the same God of yesterday, the God of today, and forever will be. There is nothing that is beyond him. It sounds so easy, yet it's so difficult for us to put into effect. But law, but brethren, what the Lord is telling us is that we have to be completely sold out to him so that he can make use of you and make use of me. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Number three, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. Thank you. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory for. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. We have been thrown the challenge already by our brother Chris. The slogan that the general overseer adopted for you and I for the year. One member, one soul, every month. Have you even preached the word to somebody? Forget about you preach and some people surrender their life. Have you ever? Uh, where do you show your fruitfulness? Have you ever preached the word? How many have you talked to this month? The church has tried to provide a venue for us to go out on evangelism. Have you been there? Have you joined the other brethren? We see only a few brethren. The same brethren every Saturday coming for such program. When you are in the taxi, do you talk to the Lord? Or do you forget the Lord at home? Have you preached the word? Not to talk of bearing fruit. You see, you preach the word, somebody accepts the Lord, you have borne a fruit. And that fruit will abide. That's what we are told. 
you know, yesterday we were talking in the Bible school and we're talking about the book of Thessalonians. And then we saw Paul had established the church in Thessalonica because of the uproar himself, Sylvanus, and Timothy. They were driven out of, they had to run for their lives. But despite that aspect of the fact that they were nearly killed, shortly after then, the Bible tells us that Paul's heart went after the Christians in Thessalonica, that the church that I have established, are they doing well? And they had to send back to them Timothy, who was of their kindred, a Greek. And when the report came back that, indeed, despite the persecution, despite the difficulty, they were doing well, the Bible says that Paul was happy. That was the genesis of the, of the letter of Thessalonians. That is, the fruit that the Lord gave to me, they are abiding. How many of us are following up the fruit that the Lord even gave to you? How many of us? Once after church, do you and I just go home and sleep? Do you even call somebody? Somebody was challenging us the other day, even in Sunday school. Do we call those who don't even come? They may not come for six weeks. Do we bother about them? I'm not saying visit them. I know the environment of Lagos. Do we even call them? Do you even say hello to your teacher? As students, do you say hello? The teacher is like you and me. Do I do that? Do you do that? When you don't see your teacher, do you ask after him? The Lord wants us to be fruitful. May fruitfulness be the portion of our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As, as, as I preach this, as I talk about this, I ask myself, and I want you to ask yourself, if you drop dead today, what do you have to show for the Lord? After death, it is what? It is judgment. What would you have to present for the Lord? But don't forget, right from the word go, the Lord has blessed you and I with fruitfulness. Number three. Okay. Sorry, I had considered. Do we carry the burden and the passion for soul winning? Passion results from burden. When you feel, you know, for a set of people, when you feel for something, then you develop a passion for it. If you like a shirt, then you, you devise a means of how to get that shirt. If it is that you don't have money, you look for money. If it is that, that it is not sold in this country, either you go to the country where it is sold or you send somebody who is going to that country. But first of all, you have to develop that passion. How many of us even pray for souls? Or do you think it's just any other exercise? Because you are a Christian, you just wake up this morning and just start. Do you pray, Lord, give me souls? Not just souls, but souls that abide. Don't forget, the moment you are saved, you are recruited into the army of God. The moment you are saved, the blessing comes unto you. The moment you are saved, that child lies at your doorstep. First of all, having a burden. Before you talk of the passion, do you have the burden? The truth is, many of us, including myself, we even forget about it. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Do you preach the gospel in season and out of season? I used to remind myself, especially in those days, when I'm looking for an excuse not to go to church, immediately you come out and you look at the sky. Ah, looks as if rain is coming. I don't think I can go to church today because of this rain. 
<laughs> I'm only deceiving myself. I had made up my mind I don't want to go to church. The day you don't want to go to church, if somebody is there who has been owing you money for the last 20 years that you have almost forgotten, he phones you, please, I'm traveling abroad today. I'm not coming back. Can you come and collect your money? Let me see whether you will go. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. Whether it is convenient for you or it is not convenient. Whether you think... Somebody was telling me the other day that, you know, those of us who travel by public transport, even if you do no longer travel with public transport today, at least in the yester years you did, especially if you are from the north, if you are traveling in such cars, when it is time, two o'clock, they will show you who they are. Am I correct? Am I speaking to us as a congregation? You understand what I mean? They will show you who they are. They will show me who they are. But many of us, eh, eh, no, this is not the right place. This, no, no don't, don't talk about, don't talk about the world. This is not the right place. But the Bible says, preach the word in season and out of season. Ah, may the Lord bring it to our consciousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fruitfulness unto our consciousness. At all times. Let's be an example in everything so that people can see Christ in us day in, day out. Every aspect of our life. Let it be so much that even unconsciously you do it without knowing because you are already used to it. That is your nature. That is your DNA. That is your life. Be connected always to the source of fruitfulness. Can we read Romans chapter 8 verse 14? Be connected always. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And one of the things I normally remember in this issue is the fact that God had given me the opportunity to practice as a gynecologist. And when you are taking delivery of babies, for the baby to be alive, once the baby comes out, the doctor or the nurse who is attending, he cuts the umbilical cord. Our women who, our mothers who have given birth to babies, you understand what I'm talking about. You cut the umbilical cord. If you don't, after some time, that baby is gone. But brethren, God is saying, in, for spiritual fruitfulness, your umbilical cord must be maintained. You must stay connected. Otherwise, you and I will die. Just like, as we are told, a branch is not on its own. You must collect source from the roots, from the stem. So your umbilical cord must be maintained. By every means, you must maintain it. If it's possible, I will add, when to you it is convenient and it is not convenient, you must maintain that umbilical cord. Let's go on to the power that is available to us. For all round fruitfulness. The Holy Spirit is the power for all round fruitfulness. When you go to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Okay, thank you. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's the King James Version. He gives us the grace to witness. He gives us the grace to witness. And yet again, I encourage us, if you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, seek for that baptism. Because he gives you grace 
to witness. And there are many more. He gives you power to witness. It's not as if, if you are a child of God, you go out and witness, you may not win souls. You will. But I tell you, the fruit you will harvest will be much greater when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives us grace to resist the devil. How many minutes do I have more? Sorry, I didn't check the time. 20. Thank you. He gives us grace to resist the devil. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He gives you that grace, that enablement. But very importantly, in the challenge we had given earlier to develop a burden, he will help you in your prayer life. And you will not just pray, you will pray correctly. That's the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us that when you go out, signs and wonders will follow you. But I tell you, the Holy Spirit releases that power for the manifestation of signs and wonders. May signs and wonders follow you. I know here that some of us are already, you know, thinking when my life is not straight, when my life is not correct by your standard, how can I even be fruitful? How can I go about asking for spiritual fruitfulness? I have good news for you. Particularly, there are some of us here. I believe I heard from the Lord. Even by last night, you were weeping unto the Lord. By reason of today's message, you will receive life. And that life will result in fruitfulness in you. Number five. The Holy Ghost gives divine strength to overcome human weariness and tiredness. Yes, you can be weary. You can be tired. You can feel exhausted. But the Holy Ghost will refresh you. The Holy Ghost will energize you. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's not in word. And that's why when you go to the epistles of Paul, he tells you that I didn't come to you with the ability of speech. With how handsome or beautiful I am. No. But I came in the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the word. Even if somebody bamboozles you with either outlook or speech or anything, in a few minutes, that thing will be gone. But when the power of God to minister is there, that power will maintain that word in you. So the Holy Ghost enables you, gives you the power for manifestation of signs and wonders. It gives divine strength to overcome human weariness and tiredness. And that we can get. We will not bother opening into it for time. He emboldens a believer and removes all forms of fear. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. All forms of fear. 2 Timothy 1 7. Okay. For God had not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of what? A sound mind. That mind, that sound mind will send you to sleep. When they are beating the war of drums, you have a sound mind because fear is gone from you. And yet, even if those people are against you, like Paul, who suffered so terribly in the missionary journey, there is nothing but love that you will show to those people. Nothing. 
Even though you know that they have nothing but hatred against you. Even though you know that their hatred is just a pile of lies. You will have nothing but love for them. And then it helps you to hear from God. The Holy Spirit helps you to hear from God distinctly. You can't be a child of God without hearing from God. Please, if you are not hearing from God, or you don't even know what you think you are hearing, speak to older Christians here. They will guide you. You must hear from God daily. Don't forget that even hearing from God might be through his word. That's the greatest word he has given you. A verse you know that you even memorize. God can use that to speak to you that very day. And it will look so fresh as if you have never heard that word. You've never seen it before. You must hear from God. You must hear. There is no child. You are living with your father in the house and he doesn't speak to you. Something is wrong. Are you with me, church? You can't be living with somebody and he doesn't speak with you. Not to talk of your father. That is always with you everywhere you are. It's like you carry your house everywhere. Daddy is always at home. Daddy is always there. And you don't hear from him. Ah. Go and examine him. Something is wrong. Lastly, the process necessary for all round fruitfulness. I have said the first thing, which is that you must be a child of God. You must be a child of God. And then stay connected. You must be. We cannot experience fruitfulness except we are firmly grafted in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the true vine. I will give, I will, and I will give a small testimony shortly. Remember that fruitfulness is by choice. You can decide to obey the word of God. You can decide not to obey. You can decide to hear the word of the Lord. You can decide not to hear. It is by choice. I don't know what the Lord is speaking to you. But one thing I know, and I'm very sure, of, He desires you and I to be fruitful. Will you be fruitful today? And the testimony that I wanted to give, you know, before I ever came to Lagos, even before, in one of the older towns, specifically it was Ilori, I hadn't known much then. I love garden around my house, always. And in that garden, more, more like an orchard. I like, if possible, mangoes. I plant guava. We used to have them in our compound. And then the other one that I loved most was purple, and we planted purple. And somehow, I would go and, after my quiet time, I'll go and look at those plants. If it needed watering, I'll water. Mangoes produced, the guava produced, I was expecting purple to produce. So it didn't produce. So I thought, okay, the next year, that maybe I was too much in a hurry to eat purple. And then, the next year, nothing happened again. So I asked people around. So some people came to see. They say, ha. Ah. They call it male purple. It's the male purple that I planted. <laughs> I said, I didn't know there's male. Which one is called male purple? They said, that's the one that doesn't fruit. Look, the cutlass are using bringing it down. I'm serious. I said, what? And I've spent all my energy on this purple, expecting fruit. I didn't know there was male purple. May you not be a male purple for the Lord. <laughs> I'm not saying you should change it. If you are Joseph, you should now be called Josephine. No, that's not what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. The process of fruitfulness can only be possible when we take in the word, when we read the word, when we meditate on it, but very importantly, when we do what it says we should do, whoever you are. And finally, let's look at John 15 verse 8. 
John 15, verse 8. Abide in me. O every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. God is exceedingly glorified when we are fruitful. Will you be fruitful? Conclusion. We are called to fruitfulness. It is not an option for us as God's own children. No, it is not. It starts with connecting to God, who is the vine. We must continually abide in him, even when God allows some purging, which is meant to increase our fruitfulness. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the eternal Godhead, is available to strengthen you and I and enable us to undertake this enormous task of bearing fruit. We definitely need to play our part because God has played his part. Will you play your part today? Can we just thank God for the message? Let it be that it makes meaning to you in your life. Just thank God.